Tap the power. Make the most important financial decision of your life, which is to stop trading time for money to become an owner, not just to somebody who is you know, buying things, but somebody who has become an investor. And the way you have to do that is by deciding a percentage you're going to save and you're going to keep that and put it into a financial freedom fund. You're going to take that money before you see it, put it aside, and you're going to invest it. In fact, most people describe what happens with, let's say, a fighter, uh, even somebody as, as brilliant as Money Mayweather. Brilliant guy. Unbelievable fighter. But, you know, if you talk to nobody less than 50 Cent, his former friend and partner, he said, let me tell you what he does. He goes out and he fights. He gets the money. He spends the money and then he fights. He said, and you know, he carries around a Louis Vuitton bag full of literally a million dollars in cash just in case anything special happens he wants to take advantage of. So God forbid if something happens to this man and his ability to fight, he could be in real trouble. We can't do that. And it's easy to make fun of somebody else and go, well, look at what they're doing. But don't most Americans really like, instead of fight, say work, earn the money, spend the money, work, that cycle is the worst cycle on earth, and that's the cycle I want to get you out of right now today by tapping the power and making step one the most important investment decision in your life. So what the heck is it? Well, what if you decided that you were no longer going to be a financial trader? What are you talking about, Tony? I'm not a financial trader. I don't invest in stocks. I don't, I don't do that stuff all day long. Most Americans are financial traders, even though they don't think of themselves that way. Why? Because if you're trading time for money, you're making the worst financial trade in the world. Your goal, and the goal I have for you with this book, is to make money your slave. You want money to work for you, so you don't have to. Until that happens, you'll always have some level of uncertainty, or fear, or stress, or insecurity because there's only so many things that can happen that mess up your income flow and you're in trouble. What would it feel like if you could build what I would call a money machine? Something that made money while you slept. Something that literally every day of your life, even if you weren't working, could provide you an income without ever having to work again. Because see, I ask people all the time, what are you investing for? And people say, well, I, I don't know, I'm doing my 401k so someday I can retire. Or I'm investing so that I can get, you know, more assets or a bigger nest egg. No, you're not. You're investing for one thing and one thing only. You're investing because you want an income. You want an income that will last longer than you live. In fact, I mentioned before, the number one fear of baby boomers today is that not they're going to die. That's their number two fear. The number one fear is I want to run out of money while I'm alive. And millennials have the same fear because according to statistics, about 70 to 75% of the people are going to run out of money before they die. And we're all living longer. So the chance of that happening is off the charts unless you and I create a money machine. What does that mean? It's really simple. The most important financial decision of your life is deciding that a portion of all the money you earn in your life is yours to keep, that you're not going to give it up. It's for you and for your family, and you're going to keep a portion of what you earn forever, and you're going to grow it, that you're not going to give it to, you know, Kate Spade. You're not going to give it to The Gap. You're not going to give it to whoever you normally gave it to. You're going to keep that for yourself, and you're going to grow it into something that literally will make it so you don't have to work as long as you live. I call it a money machine because it's really simple. If you were just thinking of yourself right now as you're a money machine, if you take a look at this graphic, here you are, you work your tail off, and what happens? You use your efforts to get money. You trade time for money. You take work and effort for money. But what if you just did something so simple? You already know to do it. You're just not probably doing it the level that you could. What if you made a decision that a percentage of what you earn, you're never going to see it, it's just going to instantly and automatically be put into building this money machine where you're going to take a portion of what you earn, 10%, 15%, 8%, 20%. You get to decide the number, but a portion of what you earn, no matter what, before you ever see it, 
It's almost like a tax, but the tax is paid to you instead of the government. The tax is for your future self. The tax is about creating financial freedom. So you're not like most people who can end up their life being stressed out all the time, where you're the person who can do what you want, when you want, where you want, with whomever you want, because you got freedom. How do you get there? You take a portion of this money that you've done right now and you've earned, you automatically start to fill up this money machine. Problems need energy to live. I want you to own that. Remember this, problems need energy to live. And so the concept should be that we solve problems, but we don't have to pour and deplete ourselves of energy. Because the more energy you give something, the more it expands. We want to be in the max out universe. We want to pour our energy and expense our energy towards the solution, not towards the problem. So the first thing I want you to write down is 90% of your energy, focus, time, and thought should be towards the solution, not towards the problem itself. This is a mistake most people make because they expend all the energy into the problem. They obsess over the problem, the problem. And when you expand energy, it grows to survive. And the problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and the solution becomes more and more difficult. So the first thing is, can you consciously begin to focus on energy expansion into the solution, 90% of it into the solution and not into the problem? What we do is we repeat that problem over and over and over again, and we magnify it to the point where we don't come up with realistic solutions and we deplete ourselves as energy towards the solution. And so focus going forward, when a problem arises, a challenge arises, that you focus 90% of your energy and thoughts on the solution and not repeating the problem to yourself. There's three areas of your life that, you know, I think are important, right? One is um, really mastering uh, your your mind, right? Your thought process. And, uh, and that's nothing new. The real question is, you know, at one level, how do we become more self-aware of the thoughts that are driving all of our process? But more importantly, how do we change our thinking? How do we change the habitual patterns of thinking that we become addicted to? And so that then cascades into you know our emotional responses that we have with with life around us and and our and our perceptions. So how do we reorient ourselves in a way that is congruent with the life that we actually want to create, or the business that we want to create, or the relationships that we want to create, or the, the health that we want to have? Uh, because we tend to just continue to experience the same experiences over and over and over and over. And there's nothing fundamentally wrong with us in the fact that, that we live this sort of Bill Murray, Groundhog Day type of existence, right? It's, it's the way the technology and the operating system of the human beings have been designed. But now we're entering this really interesting uh, period where I think personal growth is evolving into the next level where we're able to utilize the tech to really tap into higher levels of intelligence and become, you know, what a lot of people refer to as superhuman. So what gets people stuck in the first place? There are a number of things that get people stuck. I mean, let's talk about beliefs for a second. You know, what are beliefs? Beliefs are the meanings that we gave the experiences of our life, mostly before the age of seven, before a significant portion of the prefrontal cortex is fully formed we gave meanings to the experiences of our life or other people gave meanings to the experiences that we were having, right? I remember distinctly one time, um, I grew up in Orange County, California, and I don't know why in first grade they had to choose which mission we wanted to build along, uh, you know, we had Mission San Juan Capistrano. So at a, at a, at a paper mache and clay, I'm building Mission San Juan Capistrano in, in my garage, and my dad walks in and he says, hey, let me show you a better way to do that. Uh, the meaning I gave that experience was I didn't know how to do it right. And just because of the way the technology works, what happens is that starts to shape the lens through which we experience the future experiences of our life. So the next time you have an experience, you know, you're approaching that experience through the not knowing how to do it right. And because the brain is a goal achieving machine, that's all we start to notice, right? It's what we're not doing right. And in really no recognition of what we're doing well. So we get caught in this, in this psycho-cybernetic loop. And if you're not aware of it, there's really no way out of it because in every new experience, you're just gonna continue to focus on that which reinforces the belief systems that you established or the meaning that you gave the experiences early on, and you're gonna ignore everything else. You, you become trapped, right? In, in By this, your own 
thoughts. By your own thoughts, by, by your own belief systems. And now we're really understanding that those, those meanings aren't just some sort of uh, like marshmallow fluff or kind of esoteric concept. They're actually wired into the neural networks of your brain. Like we can't do that today, but in the future I would imagine we'd be able to brain scan you and go, oh, those are the neural networks that light up when you feel like there's not enough time or money's hard to make or you're not good enough or you're not as far along as you should be. And for years I you know, struggled in the current model of personal growth because you know, it's, it's one of those things where like the, the, the current model lends to self-awareness. And when I'm speaking on stages, I say, you know, how many of you are aware now of your limiting beliefs? And everybody raises their hands and say, how many of you have done the events? You've done the programs, you've done the coaching, you've done the different protocols, you've done the modalities. And make no mistake, I'm not criticizing them, right? This is an evolution of our own ability to change ourselves. And everybody raises their hand, right? They've been in the work, but now they're acutely self-aware and they have no idea what to do about the patterns of thinking that they're aware of that are causing the stress, anxiety, and overwhelm and holding them back. So that's where I was at one point. And, and, and if there was like a question or a, or a quest I was on, it was how do I go beyond self-awareness and actually begin to change the way I think? You look around you at the people you admire, you know, they have certain qualities. I mean, you've got, you've got friends, why do you like them? You know, generally, you know, they, 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 generally they have an upbeat attitude on life. Generally, they are generous people. They're humorous people. They're people that do more than their share. They're people that are thinking about something nice they can do for you. And all of those qualities attract you. And none of those are, are innate at birth. I mean, you, you can acquire those. And then there's other people that turn you off. You know, and, and uh, uh, they have habits, they take credit for things they didn't do, they don't show up on time, whatever it may be. They're a little dishonest about things. And if you're looking at your life at, at a young age like you are, and you can choose what kind of a person you can be, why not be the person you admire rather than the person you can't stand? It's so simple. So just write down the qualities you like. Take your, take your five best friends. Why do you like them? And just write down those qualities. And you will find there's no quality there that you can't have yourself. And similarly with the five people you can't stand to be around, <laughs> put, those, put those things down that turn you off about those people. And if they turn you off about them, why should you possess them? You're gonna, it's, it's so simple. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's not... It's, it's not. It's not like some something complicated that you think you should be learning <laughs> with an advanced it's not degree as complicated in school. as investing in the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's enormously important to have people work with you in life. Right. They're going to work with you in life if they like you. You know, and they may occasionally. I mean, if you're in the army or something, you know, you may work for somebody that you don't like. But by and large, you're going to get the best out of people if they feel good about you. And it's just so easy, but you've got to develop the habits early because you can't say I'm gonna suddenly become a terribly attractive person when I'm 60. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. Uh, so pick up the right habits now. And I will guarantee you, if you actually just write down those qualities and think about it, you will find you can have every one of the attractive qualities, get rid of the ones that are, that are negative that's and your life will be different. I think if a Michael Francis was a father figure type, probably, and I would have probably done a pretty good job at it. Fascinating. Yeah. If I had a father figure like a Michael or a Sonny or one of those guys, most likely. Gotcha. Do you think you think like a gangster at times? You have to. You, uh, there's no question about it. In the business world? Sure. Oh, you have to think that way. Interesting. Oh, you have to, especially uh, in the world of, look, we're, we're, we're friends, we're compelled, you know, we may talk here, but within your world, the bigger you get, there's a lot of people that are not happy about y your brand getting bigger. Sure. You open up more gyms. This is not exciting to a lot of other people that own gyms. It's not even exciting to somebody that runs a different model when it comes down to franchising. Right. So you're not helping people, it's helping competitors. You're hurting them. Sure. And when it comes down to it, if it's between your five locations versus my five locations, they are going to be competitive. So you get in the world of business being very 
everybody wants to help, everybody's this, and then you realize there's a part of it that some of the people would take their side over you any day. You quit in the past, no one cares. Unless you quit now. So, get up. Go find a new mission. And get after it, man. Get after it. I'm here. I said I was gonna make it. I've been through hell. But I'm here. If you try to run somebody else's race, you're gonna fail. You're going to lose. You're not gonna make it to the finish line. You're gonna tire and give up. You gotta stop caring so much about the approval of others and living for their approval. And you've gotta be who God made you to be. Every storm you have been through was never used to kill you. It was always used to push you. If you look back over your life, if you hadn't have gone through that, you wouldn't have had this. If you hadn't have gone through this, you wouldn't have had that. Keep on going, keep pushing and endure. And that's the message I'm going to have for you today. I don't know what you're going to see. I wish I could see into the future and tell you that everything's going to be all right. I can't do that. The reality, the fact is, some of you are on a journey, but you want the journey to be completed right away. You want it to hurry up and happen. You want everything to just go well instantly, but that's not how life goes. The way life flows and the way it goes, I, I hear that rhymes and I wasn't even trying. But we gotta learn, we have to learn in life that you gotta learn how to endure. You can never achieve anything in life if you don't learn how to take a licking and keep on ticking. You gotta live when it's raining, you gotta live when the sun is shining, you gotta keep on going no matter what life might handle. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how intelligent you are. I don't care how tough you are. I don't care how resourceful you are. Sooner or later, you will run into something for which you have not been rated. And when it is too much, when it is too much, that's when we really want other people to help us with the load. That's when we desperately want somebody to lift this up off of me. And most of the time, we reach out to them because we have pressure beyond our PSI. And when they disappoint us, it is not the agony of living without them. It is the agony of going back to a weight load I must bear alone. Everything starts with thought. So you must be wise and careful what you think about, because that starts everything. You got to be wise and careful. Every day, stand guard at the door of your mind. And you decide what goes into your mental factory. Don't let anybody just dump anything they want to in your mental factory, because you've got to live with the results. On the job, when you deal with certain types of pipes and certain types of hoses that have a PSI rating, it is the pounds per square inch how much pressure that thing can hold. And if you add more pressure than the PSI is on the object, boom, it will burst because of pressure. But some of you today, you've allowed your circumstances to push you down and convince you that it's too much, and it's never going to change. Now you're tempted to give up on what God's placed in your heart. But I'm asking you to dig your heels in and say, no, this is a new day. I will not give up on my dreams. I will not give up because somebody did me wrong. I will not give up because I tried and failed. I will not give up because it's taken longer than I thought. I've got a made up mind. I'm going to become everything God's created me to be. And I'm going to have everything God intended for me to have. There's got to be a relentlessness on the inside that says, no matter what happens, I refuse to quit. As long as God has given me breath to breathe, I'm going to keep pressing forward, pursuing my dreams, believing for his very best. 
everything about your life that God has for you is always outside of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone has everything except your calling. And it's the pain and it's the challenge that expands my capacity. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith is developing perseverance. There's a development process. Perseverance means my capacity got bigger. I can handle more. I love this little phrase. It says this. The definition of capacity is the ability to receive or to contain. Yet I actually believe the definition that you choose to believe for your life is going to be the thing that's going to cap your capacity. Your capacity grows the more you're able to release. It's releasing that gives you time for renovation. I'm challenging my capacity. Some of you in this room right now, the pain of releasing it is keeping you from growing your capacity. It's painful. It can feel like fire, but as the walls come down, your ability to contain and to receive more, it grows. Don't waste your pain. Someone say, don't waste your pain. So most people like to use that language. They don't want to commit themselves because commitment means, among many things, no excuse is acceptable. That's what it means. No excuse that if you decided that you're going to do this, if it becomes hard, then do it hard. If it's difficult, so what? If it's inconvenient, so what? See, a lot of people made a commitment to come here tonight, but they looked outside and said, it's rainy. The temperature dropped. It's cold outside. And they decide to give up on their commitment. And that's how people do about their dreams. They don't honor their commitment to themselves. Let me tell you what happens when you when you don't keep your commitment. Number one, it begins to deplete your, your self-esteem and it erodes your self-image. It weakens your faith in yourself. You don't feel good when you don't keep your commitment. The other thing is that you begin to develop weak relationships with people. People begin to realize they can't depend upon you. They can't rely on you because you won't keep your word. You can establish that kind of reputation. Just think, what would your life be like if you decided to keep your commitments? What will all of our lives be like if we decided to keep our commitments? That we decided to do the things that we said that we were going to do? That we wouldn't even speak it unless we were going to do it? If we decided just for a week, just see what your life can be like. Just let's do it for a commitment to make, make it a seven day commitment that I won't say I will do anything unless I'm going to do it. And find out what your life will be like. Let me tell you what, if you follow it through, if you keep your commitment to the commitment, at the end of the seven days, you'll feel strong and powerful. Because by honoring your commitment, each time that you do, that empowers you. Whatever discipline that is required. Whatever it is that you must do. So I'm suggesting, number one, commit yourself to live in the present. I saw the movie, um, The Dead Port Society, Robin Williams, and it had a line in there, seize the moment. Many of us are not able to move forward and develop and manifest our greatness because we spend so much time looking back or worrying about the future. Seize the moment. See, you cannot go into the future and manifest your greatness when you have various things in your life that's blocking you. Let's look at how we can begin to keep our commitments. Remembering what Dr. Robert Anthony said, about results. When you keep your commitments, you're able to produce some different kinds of results in your life. So how can we keep our commitments? And do we keep all commitments? No, we don't. You will not be at 100%. However, you will have a greater percentage rate of, of maintaining your commitments to yourself, whatever those things might be. If it's going into business, if it's, if it's changing a habit that you know that works against you, if it's overcoming self-destructive behavior, if it's retraining your thinking, if it's reinventing yourself, if it's trying to begin to design your relationship differently, all of us have the possibility by focusing and really harnessing our attention and concentrating on it, we really have available to us the power to honor our commitments in those particular areas. Make it priority. You would think that when God calls you towards your purpose or your destiny, everything would be liberated. Your finances, your friends, your circumstances would all come into a harmonious agreement with the purpose of God in your life. You have to go bound. You have to go broke. You have to go nervous. You have to go scared. You have to go intimidated. You have to go crawling. You have to go vulnerable. You have to go stuttering. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm bound, but I'm going. Go bound. 
Stop waiting on everything to line up for you to go. Go bound, go broken, busted and disgusted. Go nervous, go scared to death. Go with your knees shaking and your teeth vibrating. But go, when God says go, go anyway. Go, 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 go. It may be winter in your life right now. Things are difficult. You don't see any growth. It's kind of dark and gloomy. The good news is spring is on its way. A brighter season is right around the corner. Your new season could start tomorrow. You could see things start to blossom in your life this coming week. Your strength comes back. You feel good once again. What happened? The season changed. It looked like it was dead. Looked like it was never work out, but you stepped in to a new season. I got to tell you, there are going to be times on the pursuit of your dream that you're going to have to go a little extra. You know, you're going to have to go a little bit harder than maybe you have in the past or maybe that you're going right now. I think every now and then we need to be reminded of the greatness that is inside of us. Like we need to be reminded of how much of an amazing person we are. Some of you have been convinced you're in a losing season right now because you feel very discombobulated on the inside. You're not so certain about certain things that are going on in your life right now. It is not a loss. In fact, it is a new level. It is actually you going deeper into the things of God to understand His heart at a level that you couldn't have before. It's all ready. Yours. The grace that you need to change is already yours. The grace that you need to go forward is already yours. The grace that you need to rise up is already yours. The grace that you need to do it in the face of adversity and uncertainty, it's already yours. What you are reaching for is already yours. Whatever that you want to do, whatever you want to begin to create and beginning to manifest your greatness and, and strengthening your level of commitment, and it's, it's really exercising your will, find something that you want to do on your goal, one action step, but make sure it stretches you, that it challenges you, but it's doable, that you can do it. This year I decided that I was going to exercise. So I started out doing just 10 setups. I know I can do that and not get upset about it. So I start out small, now I'm up to 50, but if I try to do 50 starting out, I wouldn't still be doing it. So I started doing it in manageable segments, do that. And that, that strengthens your will. So my commitment now is strengthened and fortified by the activity of actually doing it. So now I can expand and build from there. And I started saving 5% of my money. Then I increased it to 10% then to 15%. So now I have disciplined myself to live off 75% of my income. I took discipline to do that, but I started watching how I was spending my money. I started keeping a law and following myself. So you want to begin to find something that is manageable, that you know that you can do. But inside of you, there is a, a natural inclination to lead. But we have been almost harnessed like a horse. Where they have placed certain things in our lives that administer pain if we move a line. They come by threat. They come by intimidation. They come by instilling fear in you if you do certain things. Like losing your job if you resist something they got these pressure points like a horse you know you control a horse by pain when you put that stirrup in that horse's mouth you know that bridle that hurts the horse when you pull it it hurts the horse so the horse turns to stop the hurt that means you're not controlling the horse the horse is responding to pain and that's what they've done with humans they the culture has put a bridle in your life which tells you don't go in that direction we will give you pain. My hope, you will by yourself spit the bridle out. That you will regain your natural stallion spirit. 
Anybody feel that in the mind? That's what I want to see. I want people to, to capture themselves and say, wow, this is me. That's the struggle we have to deal with. The next thing in beginning to, to keep your commitments to yourself, have some friends that will hold you accountable, that won't let you off the hook, that won't tolerate anything less than the best from you. People that will support you in this new way of being, in this new state of consciousness. The other thing is that important is have a contingency plan. See, many times when you make a commitment to do something, there are some other variables that will happen that you can't control or you perhaps did not think about. So you want to have some other plans going on. You want to become creative. See, most people don't keep their commitments because when something goes wrong, they just stop. They don't have a contingency plan. So they don't know what to do next. Start being creative. If you challenge yourself, many times you say, I don't know what to do. And I always ask myself, but if you did know what to do less, what will it be? That activates another part of my mind. I start thinking about the possibilities and just experimenting. But many, many of us just stop dead in our tracks. I don't know what to do. You do know what to do. You've got genius in you. Challenge yourself, push yourself, make yourself come up with something. Use your imagination. And what you will find is that you know more than you realize that you know. That you're more creative and more resourceful than you realize that you are. And as you do that, the more you do it, the easier it will become. At first, it's going to be a struggle. And after you get into a certain level of consciousness, you will ask yourself, I, how is it that I didn't see this before? At the level that I'm managing my business now, they say consciousness is what we are. I literally look at myself and say, how is it that I didn't do this before? Why is it that I couldn't see this before? And the reason that I didn't see it before, because I didn't challenge myself. I didn't put myself out here. See, the reason that most of us go through life never discovering our true greatness, literally walking, breathing corpses, the uncommitted life isn't worth living. Why? Because it doesn't produce anything. See, you only make things happen, your life only counts, you only make a difference when you are committed, when you make a commitment with your life. That's the people that make a commitment with their lives, the people that make a commitment to their customers, the people that make a commitment to their families, to their relationships, are the people that make the greatest impact in life. What is commitment? Commitment is the salesman who says, look here, I'm going to make a thousand dollars today and I'm not going home. You can turn the lights out, the janitors could be here running the vacuum cleaner, I'm not leaving here till I do it. I used to be a door-to-door -door salesman. I had X number of TVs. I had a minimum amount that I knew I had to sell every day in order to provide for my mother who was ill at the time, who had lost her job at the M&M cafeteria because of arthritis. And I said, I'm going to go door-to-door -door, and sometimes I would not come home until one o'clock at night, knocking on people's door, people closing. What do you want? Would you like to buy a nice working month's television set, no money down? No. What about an Emerson TV? No! Thank you very much. Do you know anybody else that would be interested? No! Thank you very kindly. Knock on another, hello? Would you like to buy a nice working television set? No money down? No! Get away from our door. Thank you very kindly. Do you know anybody else would be? Yeah, my cousin, he lives two doors down. Thank you very kindly. I tell him you sent me. When I hey, your cousin told me that you wanted to buy a television set, told me to come in and talk to you, got a special discount for you. Yes, come in, I'm interested. I would just keep right on. I would not go home until I did. It's an interesting thing, ladies and gentlemen, that when we put ourselves in a situation where we say we're going to do it, it, it puts you in another zone where the universe responds to you. When you have that kind of consciousness, see, the universe responds to the man or woman that refuses to be denied because that is your commitment. That business that you want, that book you want to write, that dream that you have, of controlling your destiny. That is yours. That power to create that and to manifest that, that is yours. That's available to you. But you've got to be willing to stand there and face disappointment, not have support. Be lonely. Doubt yourself sometimes. Be rejected again and again and again. Become bankrupt if necessary again and again and again. And refuse to turn around until life gives it up. If you want a million, you'll make a million, not a million five.
If you want 10 million, 100 million, and uh, you'll never exceed that. If you change a billion lives, that's a formula to become a billionaire and change the world. Time costs lives. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. You want to know why you're all f***ed up? Just look at the bums you hang around with. I do what you don't want to do that you know that you got to do to be where you want to be. Ted Turner just gave his 75th anniversary party on CNN a few months ago. And he has, he makes a couple of comments and he says, number one, and I'm not suggesting this for everybody. It's how I live though. Uh, first 10 years of my uh, starting CNN, uh, I slept on my couch. I, had, I didn't have an apartment. Bill Gates slept in the office. Steve Jobs slept in the office. And I can go down a whole list. Now these are super successful, mega wealthy guys. I slept in my office. Not everybody's willing to make that sacrifice. But it's not the only thing. But even if you don't sleep in your office, if you want to send your kids to a better school, if you want to be able to take care of your mother when she gets dementia, if you want to do, this all takes money. When I, my children aren't getting any of my money when I die. Not, not one centavo, not one penny. And um, uh, two of my kids are cool with it. One of them's not so cool with it. I'm not going to, you know, I, I think Andrew Carnegie, by the way, Andrew Carnegie, arguably the richest, most successful entrepreneur of all time. He said the, uh, the, the best thing that you can have for a child is him to be born into poverty. And I agree. Lack of self-esteem, uh, lack of self-worth. Now, they think they have self-worth. They think because they've made a few bucks. But in actuality, and when they measure it against the other 8, 10, 12 people sitting around the table, they realize, or they start to question, hell, maybe I was just lucky. Now, all of us, when you're only a one-trick guy or gal, think, was I lucky? Now, I've done it so many times, I know I wasn't lucky. I might have been lucky the first time, but I haven't been lucky the 15, 20, 40, 50, 60. I know that. Okay. But maybe I was lucky the first time. The, but my life changed when I went, I was pretty much a, a, a haphazard kid, got in a lot of trouble, got arrested four or five times, thrown in jail. And this was when my dad's a cop. But then I went, I volunteered for the draft um, in 1966 at the height of the Vietnam War. And um, I went to OCS and that changed my life because it was the really first real high performance thing that I could measure myself against other, with other people. Two thirds of all Fortune 500 uh, CEOs have one thing in common, military background. Really? Two thirds of those two thirds have something else, martial arts. What do you learn in martial arts, Brian? Discipline, focus. A lot of people don't believe they deserve to be there. You deserve to see what your life would look like if you gave 120%. Are you hearing what I'm telling you, baby? Listen to me very closely, right? You got to get this. You deserve, right? You, you, you've been living 70%, 80%. We've been talking about it. And, and you're looking at the result, the outcome, right? You reap what you sow. You're looking at the outcome of somebody giving 70%. Like every, everything, everything you have, everything you are, everything you're doing, like it's, it's 78. And what I need you to do is I need you to look at yourself in the mirror and say, come on, quit. Stop playing. I deserve to see what my life would look like if I gave 120%. Now, I told a story years ago on YouTube, years ago, Dr. Maybank, Michigan State University, I'll never forget. She told this story, man, and it blew my mind, right, right, right? She took me back to kindergarten, like, and you gotta get this in your spirit. She, sister girl took me back to kindergarten, the hokey pokey, right? And so she telling the story of the hokey pokey that's blowing my mind, right? And I'm telling it to you today because that's how important the story was. That's how salient it was. Like, it was impactful, it moved me, right? And she said, in, in kindergarten, right, you learn in kindergarten that, that you put your left foot out, you put your left foot in, right? You, you put, again, you put your left foot out, you put your left foot in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey, she said, and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about, right? And so she started breaking the song down, and she said, first you start, you put that left out, right? And then you go to the next level and you put that right out, right? Then she said, you put that left arm out, right? Right? You know the song. Then you go with that right arm, right? And then she said, but, 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 but at the end, right? When, 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 when it culminates, right? She said that the teacher tells you to put your whole self in. 
Ah, you got it. You got it. She said, put your, have any, your whole self in, right? Put your whole self out, right? And shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. And listen to me very closely. I'm telling you from personal experience, I know what my life was like when I put in 55. I know what it was like when I didn't try. I know what my life was like when I didn't care. I know what my life was like when I didn't have any dreams or any goals. Like, like I didn't want anything. I know what my life was like. Now I'm putting in 120, baby. I'm putting in 120. Look at it. I'm putting in 120 and my life is sweet. My wife's life, my kid's life, my mama's life. Listen to me, my father, I'm, on a, I'm, I'm in a Detroit free press and my parents, my parents are proud. Are you hearing me? When you put in 120, not only does it affect your life, it affects your family's life. It affects your friend's life. It affects your community's life. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? So I need you to do me a huge favor. Yep, this one is different. This one is the call of action. All right, I'm gonna put you on to give up, put you on a 21 day challenge. I'm challenging you. If you listen to me, if you ain't brave enough to challenge yourself, if you ain't courageous enough to challenge yourself, I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to get from where you are. I'm challenging you to stop settling. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to stop accepting the life that was given to you. And I'm challenging you for 21 days. I'm challenging you to give 120%. Are you hearing me? I'm challenging you now. And I want somebody at the end of this 21 day, I need somebody to send me a video. I need somebody to send me a video and just show me, ET, you are 100% right. Like I put in 120% for 21 days. I did not fatigue. I did not give up. I did not give in, E. I did exactly what you told me to do, E. And look, boom, things changed. Like my marriage changed. My classroom changed. My, uh, as a basketball player, my team changed. As a coach, the way my team responds, it changed, ET, 120%. I want you to stop giving 70, stop giving 80, stop giving 90. You want to deserve to see what would happen if you gave 120%. All right, all right, all right. So a couple things I need you to do on this 21-day challenge, right? The first thing I need you to do for me is I need you to have a vision. I need you to have a vision of when you get to that 21 days, what do you want? What do you want to happen after that 21 days? What, what is dying in your life? Look right now, what is what is mediocrity look like in your life? Look, what does defeat look like in your life? What 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 are limitations? What are boundaries look like in your life? In 21 days, this won't look like it. My marriage won't look like this. My grades won't look like this. Are you hearing me? We're gonna be better as a team. Our outcomes are going 21 days. I challenge you, 21 days. The first cast a vision. What will your life look like after those 21 days? Listen to me, do me a huge favor. 21 days, do it right or don't do it. Yep, you heard what I said. For the next 21 days, do it right or don't do it. Stop half doing stuff. Stop putting forth 50% effort, 60 percent Look, stop. Do it right or just don't do it at all. Are you hearing me? Do it right. Knowing when an opportunity is right and when more preparation is needed. Be patient in knowing the difference between when the opportunity is right and when more work needs to be done. Remain alert, even if opportunity doesn't come right away. Keep looking. Be patient. Keep preparing for opportunities, even if there's a delay. Even if things aren't going just the way you think they should. Keep your disappointments at bay. Be prepared. Always be prepared. Don't let impatience allow you to give up. Take the little setbacks in stride. Don't let small disappointments discourage you. Don't let the little successes delude you. Avoid the emotional roller coaster that will always, always disrupt your plan. Life is going smoothly, then the bottom falls out. Everything is coming up roses, then the bottom falls out. The life starts going your way finally, then the bottom falls out. And when we begin to understand and know that, accepting that reality that, that we will never ever have things just on an even keel all the time, that you're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. But during those down moments, that's where the growth takes place. That's where the work is. You worked on a job 35 years and now you're laid off. You plan for life to work a certain way and then the bottom falls out. You're looking for this, and God sends that. That even though you love God, does not mean that the bottom will not fall out. You might be going through a season, since darkness is the absence of a thing. You might be going through a season of the absence 
of a thing that you legitimately need, but it ain't over. You, you have to be, you have to be awfully immature to think that every day is going to be a good day. Some days are better than other days. And some days, if it ain't one thing, it's another. One of the things that we know about life is that it is always changing. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes things go real well, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes you're happy, and sometimes you're sad. Now that's that thing called life. You may have to function for a while without the absence of the thing you adore. But it's not over. It's just that God has created the treasures of darkness. And in order to create the treasures of darkness, he has to take away light so that he can incubate what he's about to do in your life. It will be hard because life is hard. That's what life is. And these challenges, they're going to do their best to take you down. Do not let them. Stand up. Dig in. In the end, we are only as strong as the adversity that we overcome. The pain of the adversity will eventually subside, but the lesson will always remain. And that lesson will strengthen you to endure your next battle, this time stronger and wiser than before. Line up those problems and confront them. Face them. Do not let them bring you down. In fact, let those challenges raise you up. Let them elevate you. Let their demands and their trials make you stronger. Let the adversity you face today turn you into a better person tomorrow. The way you handle your good years will determine if you survive the bad years. In other words, you must learn to maximize the positive. If you don't learn how to maximize the good times and minimize the bad times, then you won't make it through the famine. Victory begins in the dark. And we all go through these times where we don't think it's going to work out. Seasons where nothing is changing. We're being our best, but the business is not growing. The fact is, light is on the way. What God promised you is in route. You've been believing for things to change in your marriage, your finances, with an addiction. It seems permanent. You've already entered a new day. You've already passed midnight. You can't see it yet, but victory is on the way. Life and business is like the changing seasons. You cannot change the seasons. That's impossible. You can't rearrange the seasons. The seasons are going to come however they're going to come. You cannot change that. So you cannot change the seasons. But make this note. You can change yourself. That was the message I got when I was 25 years old with someone who took the time to teach me. You can change yourself. Now, instead of complaining about the dark, have a new perspective. The dark means the sun is on the way up. The promise is about to come forth. Who can stop the sun from rising each morning? Who can keep light from breaking forth over the horizon? All the forces of darkness cannot stop what God has ordained for you. They cannot keep what he promised from coming to pass. In the face of that darkness, when you don't see any light, get in agreement with God. See, anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid. Anybody could be positive then. Anybody can have a larger vision then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. The real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. Somebody said that, that adversity introduces a man to himself or a woman. Adversity is a gift. Embrace it. Trying to avoid adversity would be like trying to avoid the tide while swimming in the ocean. But like the ocean, if you can learn to embrace the tide of adversity, you will eventually learn to let it lift you up and you can ride the wave to shore unscathed. And in that moment, take a look around because the view that you have after you've overcome your adversity is absolutely breathtaking.